Hi, um, this is Charlie Calvert. Let's talk for a moment about passing ref and out parameters. Suppose we had a, a simple program <clears throat> that prompted the user for some input and we asked them to enter a number and then we got some input from them and we took the number that was that they gave us and we squared it. Okay, so let's see what that might look like. And we're gonna square the number and then what we'll do is we'll just use the built-in tools in Visual Studio to implement the square method there for us or at least uh, write the header and the curly braces for us and then we'll return some kind of result. And now this is your classic method and frankly this is the way methods should be declared and it's the model you should always use for methods. Try to pass in some parameter here and return some value back out. Okay, Data comes in, one, zero or more parameters come in, zero or, more, uh, one, zero or one values are returned. Okay, If you don't want to return anything you declare it as void. All right. Now let's consider a more complicated case. Suppose we wanted to do some integer division. Okay, so we're going to get a, a dividend coming in and we're going to get a divisor coming in and we don't want to use floating point numbers so instead what we want to do here is return the dividend divided by the divisor like this. But now, since we don't have floating point numbers here, we also are interested in the remainder. So how are we going to return a remainder? We can only return one value from this um, particular method. Now, there are tricks you can use here. You could declare a struct. You could declare a class. You could use a tuple. There's various things you could do at this time. But right now, we want to think about um, ref and out parameters. And as I say, as I tried to imply earlier, it's best to avoid ref and out. It, it's really sort of an aesthetic blot in a way. It's, it's, it's not a, a ideal situation, but there are times when you do want to use them, and certainly it's a part of the language which any student of C-sharp ought to understand. So what we can do is we can declare a parameter here with this out keyword. And if we do that, then we're able to return a value via a parameter. Okay. And so we just say, we just set the remainder equal to the dividend uh, modulus, the divisor, which will give us uh, the remainder here. So now let's just change our, our code up here a little tiny bit. And we're going to get two values coming in here instead of one. We'll go ahead and give everybody the appropriate name here. Just spend a little time doing some uh, housekeeping here to keep everything in place. And, uh, and then let's declare a value here, which is going to be our remainder. And so we'll go ahead and we'll say that the remainder. Now you don't set it equal to anything here. This is the rules that you use when you're using out parameters. If you want to. Um, pre-initialize the variable before you pass it in, then you should declare it um, at, by ref rather than as out. But in this particular case, we're going to pass in our dividend, we're going to pass in our divisor, and then we're going to use that out keyword again and we're going to pass in the remainder. And now watch what happens here. Why don't we write out a result here and we'll go ahead and we'll say that some particular dividend divided by some particular divisor is going to yield a particular value with a remainder of something else, right? And we'll go ahead and we'll declare these guys here and we'll pass in, why don't we go ahead and go to another line here, we'll pass in a dividend, we'll pass in a divisor, and then we'll pass in our remainder. Okay, now. And we'll
we'll pass in a dividend and we'll pass in a divisor and then we get 6 divided by 4 equals 1 with a remainder of 2 or we'll just try it one more time we'll do 15 divided by 6 equals 2 with a remainder of 3. So now you understand a little bit about how those out parameters work and remember that if you wanted to and it won't quite make sense logically here but if you wanted to pre-initialize the value and be able to use it inside the method then you don't pass it without you pass it with ref instead but um, that's not what we're doing in this particular case and we're, so we're doing things this way so there's out and there's ref <clears throat> once again not the preferred way it's always nice if you can keep that classical pattern of passing in zero or more values here and returning zero or one values here and don't try to return things through this is really the indoor you don't want to return things through here but sometimes it may become important to do that so thanks for watching have a good time programming